Hey everyone, it's Julie Livingston with Want Leverage Communications for another installment of Julie's PR Patter, where I bring in all the great people in my marketing and communications network to talk about everything in terms of marketing and public relations, and actually just navigating today's uh, workplace. So today I wanna know, how are you addressing the massive amounts of change at work today and in life? We are in the midst of a workplace revolution and there's just no going back to the way it was. I am so delighted to welcome my colleague and my coach, Brian Gorman of Doobie Associates today. We're gonna to talk about approaching change with a new mindset. There's been so much disruption over the last few years due to the, the pandemic, uh, social movements, major political upheaval, and challenges to our global democracy. So much is going on that change is just a constant. Um, and how do you adjust your mindset to embrace change? So Brian has spent much of his career studying the effects of change on people and especially in the workplace. The Doobie Associates team brings business improvement consulting and coaching, executive coaching, together in a very dynamic way that helps business owners get back to the business of doing what they love. Brian, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to be here, Julie. As you know, this is a topic that lights me up. I, I know. And I, you know, I think that everyone, um, I happen to be somebody who does, um, even though change creates a little bit of fear, I also embrace it. Um, and so I have myself, re I've reinvented myself in my career many, many times over the years. But I have friends and colleagues who, when they hear the word change or transformation or pivoting, they just kind of flip out. They, 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 it is just something so fear inducing to them that they just avoid it um, as much as they can. So how do you, how do you help people and business leaders to embrace change as something that's actually positive? So whether a change, first of all, Julie, whether a change is positive or negative is mindset. The change that I can see, that I see as positive, um, which is change driven by the great resignation. And we can dive more deeply into that. Um, many other business leaders see as negative. So my job isn't to convince you that you're seeing the change wrong. Um, it's to help you succeed despite how you feel about the change. Right. Because that your mindset is sort of like the lens through which you see the world and all of the, I guess, preconceived notions or conditioning that you've had affects how you will cope with change. Is that right? That, that, that's true. And, and even there, you know, do I want to cope with change or do I want to leverage change um, to the benefit of myself, my business, my customers, and, and so forth? Can you give us a few examples of how, of the work that you've done with executives, uh, business leaders in um, helping them to address their mindset about change and, and helping them to move forward? in the way that makes sense for them? Yeah, and let's go back actually to the early days of COVID. And uh, if you're like most people, the response was everything's changing. The world around me, I don't know it anymore. Everything's changing. Well, that's because our focus was on all of the disruption. And so one of the first things that, that I did during COVID was to uh, conduct online uh, anchors workshops. Anchors are those things in our lives that provide us a sense of stability, security, um, sense of we know what to expect. And COVID disrupted a lot of those anchors. I'm not commuting to work anymore. I'm you know, I'm not going to the gym anymore. I'm not having that drink on Friday evenings with, with my colleagues anymore. 
Um, I'm, I'm not hanging around the coffee pot or the water cooler anymore. Everything's changing. Well, no, no. You know, at the organizational level, uh, the organizational values haven't changed. The organizational mission hasn't changed. The, the customers the organization is serving are, are still the organization's customers, um, other than disruptions in, in the marketplace and so forth. And even at the personal level, everything didn't have to change. So as I was conducting these workshops, just one, one quick example, um, very early on, I, I had in one of my workshops a Wall Street lawyer. And he lived in Brooklyn, commuted by subway to Wall Street every day. And um, I, I introduced the concept of anchors. The workshop structure was people would go into breakout rooms. They'd identify their own anchors personally and organizationally. They'd come back in. We'd talk about that. And then you have to readjust your anchors. So, you know, maybe you listen to podcasts on the way to work. Um, and now you get up and, and out of bed and you head to the desk. Right. So you no. set up your day differently. Yeah. Put those podcasts back in between the time you eat breakfast and, and, and the time you go to work and so forth. But this one guy came running figuratively, digitally, uh, back into the main room after the breakout session. He said, now I get it. Now I get it. Like before I even asked for a response. And I said, what, what, what do you get? He said, for the first two weeks, I get up in the morning, I go into my office, I had my computer, I had my files, I had access to, to you know the law firm's uh, computer network and so forth. I could get nothing done. And then one day, I wasn't really thinking, I got up, I put my suit on, I went into the home office, and all of a sudden I was in control again. My wow. suit is an anchor. He said, so I added another anchor to my work my my day he said before i leave the home office at the end of the day i text my wife to tell her i'm coming home anchors are personal so so that's just one example of of the the early work that i did um now it really does require a significant shift in leadership mindset um to, to deal with the disruption that uh, organizations are experiencing uh, coming, quote, out of COVID, whatever that might mean. And I think that's best illustrated um, by a conversation I had with author Chris DeSantis. Uh, Chris wrote the book, Why I Find You Irritating. <laughs> I think I should read that book. <laughs> It, it's a great book. Um, he said he actually <laughs> gave the publisher several titles and they jumped on that one. It's about uh, intergenerational conflict at work. Wow, that's a hot topic. I mean, for, for the first time, there are five generations yeah. working side by side in the workplace. And he said the problem, well, he said really there are a number of problems, but, but two of the significant ones are the di generational differences are real, but we stereotype everybody into their generation. So we stereotypically expect, quote, millennial behavior from every millennial. And just like any stereotype, you that that doesn't treat people fairly. So we have a, a, set, a mindset when we even when we enter those relationships, we don't even we may not even realize it unless we develop this awareness of what our mindset is. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the second thing that I thought was really brilliant that Chris point, pointed out is um, we raise our children to belong in their generation. And then when their peers come to work for us, we expect them to adapt to our generation's work norms. And they're stepping up and saying, this isn't how I work. Working 60 hours a week is not. Right. right. And it doesn't, it doesn't align with my lifestyle needs and what I need to be successful. 
And, and so the significant shift in mindset, I think, um, for business owners, for leaders, right down to leaders at the front line and, and leaders, managers at the front line now need to be leaders. That's a shift in mindset. But your role is to do everything you can to set people up for success, to get out of the way, and to clear the road ahead for them. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, and I think having that awareness of what, you know, where you are before you even open your mouth, before you even get into a conversation with people um, at work is, is really so critical. It can help break down a lot of barriers and blocks. Um, certainly with this whole, you know, intergenerational workplace that we're in now, wouldn't that be wonderful to have that conversation at the onset, right? To see what people really need. Not only to see what people really need, but to see why people get up and come to work in the morning. What their motivation is. As, as um, one of the Doobie Associates, my partner and I, uh, Tony Cronese, um, years ago met with a financial advisor, very successful. He, he led his region. Um, and basically he said, I plateaued. I'm not working the way I should be working. I'm not producing the results I should be producing. And we asked him, so what would it take to motivate you? What gets you up and excited right. about this work? And, and he answered, and I mean, he was very clear about literally the building he wanted to buy for his team. And he said, people love to do financial planning around the dining room table. And so I'm going to furnish my conference rooms in different dining room furniture styles. And <laughs> he had such a clear picture of where he wanted to go. And he got excited and motivated about it. And then we said, and what gets your team up and coming into the office in the morning? This was pre-COVID, obviously. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, I don't know. Wow but I think I should find out. Yeah. And so he literally went out with each team member for lunch and had that conversation. And he looked at how can I realign responsibility and, and realign how I'm expecting them to do their job to what motivates them, where their passion is. His team. That's, wow. That's amazing. His, his team has gone from seven to 30. And it is now the highest performing team in the company nationally. Wow. And that's how you really operate an employee first uh, organization yeah. by focusing on what people need. Yep. Knowing what drives them, what, get that, what gets them excited, motivated, uh, you know, how to get them to strive for, for, for more, to reach for the stars kind of thing. I had another client just, just very briefly, briefly Julie, um, we had that same basic conversation and he came back into the next coaching session and he said, thank you. He said, the day before we had that session, I had assigned my best employee to head up customer relations for the division. I went back to him and had this conversation. He said, I hate people. <laughs> Put me in. He said, put me in a closet with spreadsheets and I will be happy all so day. Right? Oh. This is not the job I want. Wow. Wow. So as leaders, we need, um, we need a mindset that is open to seeing the world through the eyes of the people that work for us. Brian, can you talk a little bit about the basis of Juby Associates is to um, doing and being and finding kind of um, a balance between those. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, through our work together, you got me to start using this the Monk Manual, which has been really helpful um, in creating more balance in my life. And in fact, I, I'm hoping to have Steve Lawson 
on the show in a few months. Uh, he founded the Monk Manual. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, but first I want to say I didn't get you to. Well, you suggested I, it. I didn't even suggest. Okay, I, you just put it out there. I introduced it to you and it okay. fit what you were looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the Doobie Associates are really um, based on the fact that at any level, whether it's individual, whether it's in personal relationships, whether it's uh, as business leaders, um, success depends both on what we're doing and who we're being. Um, Tony is the do side of the equation. Tony uh, identifies himself as a CPA in recovery. Um, he really focuses on policies, procedures, processes, um, all, good financial reporting to inform decision making, all of those things that business leaders need to be doing in order to succeed. And even when they know what they should be doing, you know, they're not. And so as a coach, I focus on who you need to be in order to be successful. So um, a, a couple of things. First of all, that makes me half a doobie. Uh, <laughs> and, and second, and, and this is tr true and it's sort of our tagline at this point, when times are tough in business, it's doobie time because you need to pay attention to both. Yeah, that is so true. Um, I can't believe we're, we're almost at, out of time. This went so quickly. Is there anything you want to leave us with about um, creating, you know, really looking at your mindset uh, as it as you approach change? Because change is going to keep coming at us. Yeah, I, I, I think there are a couple of things, Julie. First of all, uh, don't lose track of your anchors. Don't lose track of your anchors. Secondly, what are the changes I don't need to make? What are the changes that are essential? Um, we say yes to too much. We need to say no to those things that are, are nice to haves, nice to do's. Um, maybe someday I should. And then really keep your eye on the future you want. You don't have to know how to get there. Yeah. You just have to know how to take the next step. Yeah. That's great. Brian, thank you so much for being with me today on Julie's PR Patter. Uh, look forward to having you back again someday. And um, have a great week, everyone. Thank you, Julie.